Good morning, Portland. Erev Tov, Be'er Sheva. Good evening in Accra and Dakar. My name is Wayne Firestone. I'm the executive director of the America Israel Friendship League. I'm here in the Washington, D.C. area watching the snowfall, knowing that we're going to bring a lot of warmth and a lot of light and a lot of sunshine to all of our viewers around the world in Africa and Israel. In the United States, we have people from all over who have tuned in today. If you're on the northeastern coast of the United States and you're taking a break from snuggling show, shoveling snow, we're happy to have you here with us wherever you're from. Let us know in uh, the chat and on the questions over the course of the day where you're calling in from and uh, uh, perhaps something about Africa that brings a smile to your face. I have many answers, uh, uh, many comments to that. You're going to hear and see quite a few of them in this wonderful program today that we have about innovation in Africa and the incredible historic role that Mashav plays in this amazing, amazing uh, tale. I am so pleased to be joined today uh, to have as our moderator, a career diplomat at the Ministry of Foreign Affairs since 1992, Ambassador Einat Schlein. Ambassador Schlein, in addition to being the head of Mashav, it, Mashav which is the Israel Agency for International Development, uh, you're going to learn about its history, but more importantly, you're going to learn about what it's doing today. And uh, even though Ambassador Schlein is sitting somewhere, I think, in the Tel Aviv area today, she's going to introduce us to friends uh, uh, like herself who have uh, served in Africa and, 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 and really know the region uh, inside and out. Uh, she is also the Deputy Director General of, of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. She's been the Deputy Director of uh, the uh, African Affairs at the Ministry previously and also served as Israel's Ambassador to the Hashemite Kingdom of Jordan. Ambassador Schlein, you've assembled a group of smiling people with amazing stories. Turning over to you, please introduce the panel and let us know a little bit about Mashav is doing today and its wonderful legacy of innovation in Africa. Thank you so much, Wayne. Good evening, good morning, good afternoon, wherever you are. It's a pleasure for me to be here and I want to thank first the um, Israel uh, America is uh, uh, America Israel Friendship League for having us here. I think this would be a wonderful opportunity to speak not just about Mashav, but to speak about cooperation and friendship and Israel's uh, joining hands with its African partners in order to promote innovation and work for a better future uh, of the younger generations through innovation. We have with us a varied panel with rich experience, but before we introduce them, let's Mashav aims to empower those living in poverty in a holistic and innovative way and support fellow nations and communities in their struggle to achieve sustainable development, placing people at the heart of its initiatives. Our agricultural programs use unique techniques and farming methods to increase sustainability, food security, and hunger eradication. We believe that investment in education is an investment in our future and an agent for change around the world. We coordinate Israel's official humanitarian assistance, building medical facilities and supplying medicine in the wake of earthquakes, floods, famine, and other disasters. Mashav promotes innovative entrepreneurship as a means of advancing growth and prosperity. We believe that gender equality and women's empowerment are central to reach sustainable development. Our philosophy is to leave no one behind. During six decades, Mashav has trained over 300,000 people from more than 140 countries and has established development projects worldwide. Mashav, 
Israel's Agency for International Development Cooperation is celebrating 60 years of sharing its experience and partnering for a better world. Thank you. I hope you enjoyed this clip. And um, let's talk for three more minutes about Mashav. So I'm sharing my screen with you. And um, just a second, please. Okay. So Mashav is, has been around for 62 years now. And I think that the, the beauty of this organization is not just its mission and the fact that we are active all over the world. I think that it's really an implementation of the vision of our forefathers, which came to Israel, which was still a dream, a vision, and made it a country. And Israel started uh, Mashav, actually an initiative of, of the late Golda Meir in 1958, when Israel was still itself a developing country. And we reached out to other developing countries in order to share the expertise and the capabilities that um, helped us establishing our own state. And in the decades since, we've been working uh, around the world with all these, um, you know, training over 300,000 people, building excellent centers around the world and trying to share, um, share our friendship and our capabilities and help and train people and build together a much better world. Uh, all around the world. You see here uh, the different examples of, of uh, Mashav projects in Africa. We have eight priority sectors. We work in education, we work in food security, we work in, in many uh, important uh, areas. However, today we're going to speak on of one of the major aids, which is innovation. And in order to uh, talk about that, I would like to introduce our next guest, which is His Excellency, the Minister uh, Amadou Papasar from the from Senegal, please, sir, join me. I'm so happy to have you uh, to have you with us in this panel this evening. I'm very pleased to be with you today, Ambassador Slam. Thank you, sir. I am I am a great admirer of you and your work in um, in uh, Senegal. I should. Uh, tell the people who are watching this that I visited Senegal over a year ago and I met you in your office and I learned a lot about the things that you're doing. I would be happy if you could share with us the, uh, um, the programs and the initiatives that your government implements in Senegal. And um, how, how are you working in order to promote your country in this regard when we speak of innovation? And how does Mashav and its assistance integrate in these efforts? Sure. So uh, before I start, I would like to first of all uh, thank uh, personally uh, the Ambassador um, Roy uh, Rosenberg, who has facilitated this uh, intervention, and also yourself, Ambassador Slade, and congratulate you on your nomination as the head of Mashraf, since we met uh, last year, a year ago, here in Dakar. And also, I would like to uh, thank uh, sincerely Danielle. Uh, on the line because he has worked tremendously to, uh, you know, uh, trigger the links and for there to work together with uh, uh, Israel. And very briefly, in one minute, you would allow me to tell you a couple of things about mm -hmm. my work. I am leading uh, at the president office, the general delegation for entrepreneurship, which focuses mainly on entrepreneurship and innovation, supporting uh, startups and SMEs giving them access to capital, training, capacity building, but also mentoring, and as well as access to market. We focus mainly on uh, five key areas, agriculture in general, with fisheries and livestock, but also uh, education, sorry, uh, uh, all related to uh, training and capacity building, but also transport services and innovation and technology. And so far, what we've been able to do over the last two years and a half, because the delegation has been created uh, in September 2017, and I assume the role on March 8, uh, 2018. To show you how important it is for the head of state, the president of Senegal, the general delegation focuses mainly on supporting youth and women, 
uh, our funding goes to women that are aged uh, up to 70 years old and youth up to up to Can I, is it, is it, are you hearing me? Go yes, now back. we hear you, but we also would like to see you, sir, your excellency, if you could please turn on your video. Oh, the video is not on. All right, so let me, uh, let, let, let it go. Okay. Is it on? Yes. Yes, it is, sir. I'm happy to see Sorry. you again. Sorry, I, I don't know how it went. So I was saying, yeah, so we focus on women and youth entrepreneurs. We give them capital, uh, we give them training, and we support them to have access to funding. And over the last two years and a half, we've been able to invest $100 million in debt guarantees, equity, and training subsidies to allow 100,000 women and youth entrepreneurs across the country. All the regions, all the departments have been affected. And in this work, we've been doing some incredible work in uh, innovation. Uh, we have been leading the leader, leading program in innovation on startups, accompanying more than 100 startups, giving them funding, incubation means, but also access to technology here in Dakar, but also some we took to Paris, some we took to San Francisco at Draper University or 500 startups, et cetera, et cetera. The way we do that is we to have a very rigorous selection method of uh, looking at those young entrepreneurs at uh, grad school, at polytechnic schools and universities of excellence to try to tap into the potential of those young people addressing issues related to blockchain, uh, artificial intelligence, but also robotics. For instance, uh, we've been able to fund some of the startups that have developed uh, a robot uh, who have been used by the, which has been used by the Ministry of Health for the fight against the COVID-19, uh, as well as uh, uh, 3D printable mask, et cetera, and so on. So very quickly, I don't know if I should go on on your three questions or should I stop and you ask questions? Well, so thank you. That was that, that was very uh, informative and very educational. I would ask Basta. you kindly to, to turn your your uh, um, your video on again, because unfortunately we lost your image. Can you hear me? Yeah. Um, I would just be happy if you could uh, tell us how does uh, the um, Mashav Innovation uh, programs fit in the building of the ecosystem in Senegal? Excellent. Yes, we have been able to work with uh, uh, Mashav through the Israeli embassy here in Dakar and two, in two programs. The first one was with Conrad Adenauer, where we to support uh, startups in the innovation field. The delegation for work with the embassy and the Conrad Adenauer has led us to organize a capacity building workshop for our startups. This was a valuable experience for us and uh, uh, to learn about Israel's best practices in regards to structuring the innovation ecosystem. We had people from Israel who came, people who attended online, and that you know, led us to go further and uh, look for a partnership with the innovation authority in Israel in order to formalize formally the relationship between our country through our delegation and the to support innovations and startups with uh, Mashav. The second uh, experience is with the Galilee Institute where who have trained my agriculture engineers and economists in irrigation systems, but also productivity, etc. And today there is a more demand actually uh, from my team to have more training and capacity building and partnership with that institute. I hope uh, Mashav will be able to facilitate that. Well, thank you so much, Your Excellency, for sharing uh, your views and your thoughts. I hope you can stay with us. I'm sure there will be lots of questions later coming from the audience and yeah. also to enjoy the, the next uh, speakers, which would also speak of the Senegalese experience. May I introduce um, my colleague, Daniel Ashheim, who used to be the deputy head of mission in Senegal, just moved to Chicago, uh, where he's at the consulate general. Daniel is one of the fathers, there are two of uh, one of our most successful programs in innovation in Africa, Agents of Change. Please, Daniel. Thank you very much, and thank you for arranging this inspiring program today. As uh, Ambassador Schlein mentioned, until September, I had the privilege to serve two years as a deputy Israeli ambassador to Senegal. 
When Ambassador Roy Rosenblitz and I started our terms in 2018, we identified that besides the traditional and important mashav work that's made in the region, whether agriculture, healthcare, empowerment, and more, Senegal and the Gambia have the true potential to become Africa's startup nations in the next few years. And this is because of the incredible group of young, dynamic, enthusiastic entrepreneurs, men and women, villagers and city residents, who have amazing ideas and with some extra potential professional guidance, their sky's the limit. Therefore, together with Mashav, we formed and built a strategic plan to help train these entrepreneurs through various conferences, programs, and training with the prestigious Agent of Change program being their leading initiative. We work to connect them with Israeli experts and work together with the Senegalese government and with Dell. And I'm very happy that Delegate General Papa Amadou Sao, our friend, is here today, together with the private sector, academia, non-governmental organization, and local leadership in order to help build the Senegalese and Gambian ecosystem for innovation. I'm honored that the inspiring leader and friend of mine, Marianne Konate, joined us today. Marianne is an entrepreneur, a blogger, consultant who has been supporting women and men in their development for several years. She's curious, passionate, she deeply believes in sharing knowledge with her peers. Marianne was part of the first Agent of Change Court in Senegal, and she will be sharing her experience with us today. Thank you very much. Thank you so Thank much, you. Danielle. I'm so glad you could join us. And I'm just telling everyone that Danielle is being modest, but him and his uh, former boss, Ambassador Rosenblit, won a, a certificate of excellence in the Israeli Ministry of Foreign Affairs for their efforts and the creation of uh, such uh, programs as Agents of Change. So uh, without further ado, one of those young, dynamic entrepreneurs, Marianne Konate, please join us. Thank you, Excellence. Um, did you know that seven out of 10 young graduates in Africa won't have a job when they finish university? Meanwhile, small companies, which need it most, struggle to find the right human resources that could support their development. When I enrolled in the first cohort of Agents of Change on May 2019, my thought was, wouldn't it be great if companies could order their new hires like at the supermarket, you make your list of criteria and you are presented with only the best product corresponding to your list? And I was like, it would be cool, right? I, so I applied for the Agents of Change program because I thought that since Israel has developed a large culture of innovation, it would be an opportunity for me to acquire the right keys, the right skills to develop such an ambitious project. And I was not disappointed. It has really been a really great and instructive experience as it allowed me to have a more open perspective on entrepreneurship. So the agent of change courses were delivered on site by the Israel in Senegal team. Thank you again, Daniel. And online by Mashab experts who had proven field experience. There was a mix of presentation, practical cases, and innovation example on various topics such as um, entrepreneurship, of course, innovation in practice, a lot, business as a tool for social change to be a real agent of change, financial management, and as well as public speaking. But always with a pragmatic approach based on the reality of the field. So this program allowed me to acquire new entrepreneurial skills. I needed to accelerate my project, which was the Youth Skills Accelerator Hub, a technology based on artificial intelligence that prepare young graduates for the professional world and connect them with companies that needed their specific skills and abilities to develop. And doing so, we were allowing, allowing young people to access qualified jobs and small companies to get immediate access at a, low, at a lower cost to qualified and quality resources that can create real value for their business. And for that, I want to say thank you, Agent of Change. Thank you very much, Marian. Um, mm -hmm. I was very impressed when I've seen uh, the presentation of, of your project and, and your colleagues' projects. And I mm -hmm. know that you uh, um, excelled 
further in the years after. Um, could you share with us some of the projects of, that your classmates uh, initiated during this, this program as well? Uh, one project that really stuck with me uh, is uh, the one with uh, Gabi Marie. She, she, she developed a technology for smart parking in Senegal because we have a big problem with parking in Senegal. Actually, you can, you can turn over for two hours and in Dakar and you won't find a parking. And she developed a platform where you can see where you have parking, uh, free parking actually, and you can, you can select one and, uh, and, and go and you, you just put your, pack, your, your smartphone and you have your slot. You can reserve your slot before going on site. And I thought that it was great because in Dakar, it's just impossible. I think this would innovative uh, solution would have worked well, both in Tel Aviv and in Washington DC where I lived for years. <laughs> so yeah, I, I think, I think so. Uh, you know, Senegal can really import that. But uh, that's wonderful. Thank you. I've also seen some projects that deal with, with agriculture and education yes. and, and more practical aspects and more visionary aspects. And, and the, the beauty of it is that these agents came from various places in Senegal, not just in Dakar. And I really applaud you and your colleagues for, for uh, being a part of it. And um, let us share with you a, a short clip that was uh, uh, shot after one of the conferences for the Agents of Change with cooperation uh, of, of, the, of our embassy in Senegal and the uh, Konrad Adenauer Stiftung in Dakar. Please show us the clip. En 2020, déjà, l'Afrique aura la population active la plus jeune au monde. C'est vraiment important d'organiser ensemble avec l'ambassade d'Israël, la délégation pour l'entrepreneuriat rapide, une formation, une conférence pour discuter les défis et les possibilités pour les startups ici au Sénégal. Think how we can uh, promote the ecosystem of Senegal. Nous devons travailler, notamment uh, la synergie entre les différents acteurs. How we can actually use digital storytelling uh, from the young people and from the government uh, to uh, to push forward innovation uh, in in Senegal. I, I, J'ai beaucoup appris euh, de nos intervenants euh, israéliens. Israel as a startup nation, very small country. That we believe this use in the war and especially in Israel for innovation. Le point clé que l'on retient de la réussite du modèle israélien est l'implication de la diaspora dans la création d'un environnement propice à l'entrepreneuriat. On se rend compte que la majorité des outils sont là pour que le Sénégal se positionne comme un leader dans ce, dans ce domaine. On va aussi davantage organiser des formations, des ateliers, des conférences pour les start -upers. Thank you. I'm, I'm very glad to say that we've seen some of our, um, of our panelists here tonight starring in this short clip. And we had Marion and we had His Excellency the Minister and we had Daniel. So that's great. Um, the beauty of, of these uh, um, uh, training courses and this, this very um, deep engagement with the, um, with the young entrepreneurs in Senegal was also helpful, help, very helpful last year when unfortunately we had to face um, COVID-19. As we were starting to think in Israel, how can we engage, what else can we do in order to support our friends around the world uh, dealing with this pandemic? We... Uh, we reached out to the people who were part of our innovation trainings in African countries, for example, and in Senegal. And through them, we allocated 3D printers through which we, um, we printed hundreds of thousands of face shields for doctors and nurses in Senegal, in Nigeria, in Ghana. If you could please share my slides over there. Um, and... Um, 
we're waiting for to see the images, but uh, throughout the work of, of, uh, of our colleagues like Daniel and, and Ambassador Rosenblatt in Senegal, like the ambassador in Cameroon and in Nigeria and in Ghana, what we see here, we see pictures from uh, Senegal again with Daniel standing there, the printing of, of the parts of the face shields. And if we can move to the next slide, what we see in the next slide would be um, the printing of this, um, well, still waiting for the next slide, um, would be the printing of uh, face shields in Ghana, as well as a special uh, um, printer where a young entrepreneur was, was printing um, uh, automatic hand washing devices, which are simple yet brilliant, you know, that were uh, spread around the market so people could wash their hands, which obviously is the most effective um, um, uh, the most effective tool against uh, um, the pandemic. Now, uh, this actually gives me a wonderful uh, leeway to go to, from Senegal to Ghana and to Ambassador Shani Cooper, who uh, also plays a leading role in uh, promoting innovation in, in uh, Africa. Good evening, Shani Cooper. Good afternoon, Ambassador Schlein, and from uh, hot sunny Ghana. I'm very glad to see you here tonight, and um, I wanted to ask you immediately, jump in and tell us, how does the embassy support um, innovation in Ghana? How does it integrate into the, uh, local, um, the local economy? How does it build the ecosystem? Yes, yeah, so uh, we have to remember that when we're talking about innovation and the uh, innovation ecosystem, we're talking about uh, several sectors that has to uh, coordinate with each other, talk to each other. We have the academia, we have the uh, private sector, we have the government and so on and on. Uh, so uh, one of the things that we are doing is promoting innovation in every sector uh, existing, uh, let's say, in the higher priorities uh, uh, of the governmental agenda here in Ghana, uh, through all these partners that I've mentioned. For example, uh, agriculture is one of the uh, things in the it, uh, that uh, uh, receive high priority here uh, in Ghana and Israel has a lot of uh, uh, knowledge in agriculture. In Ghana, uh, although Ghana needs also the basic things in agriculture like uh, seeds and uh, uh, extending the shelf life uh, of uh, fruits and vegetables, also, uh, the, we have to see how we uh, find uh, local solutions to, to local challenges. Because if we bring Israeli solutions to Ghana, it doesn't mean that they will work. The solution should come locally. So our work is actually to promote innovation through the whole a ecosystem and we are doing it in agriculture we are doing it in health and in water and the things that we are uh, uh, that we feel strong enough uh, to share our uh, knowledge so yeah uh, great uh, that that's wonderful and uh, um, could you describe a success that you have. I know that your embassy is very, very uh, prolific as if we think of creative ideas. So uh, maybe in order to talk about success, maybe first we should talk about the challenges. And uh, when I arrived three years ago to Ghana, I started uh, talking and meeting with ministers, went from one ministry, ministry to the other and all ministers uh, which really they were uh, making a, an excellent work, but they were all um, uh, proud of the of leading the innovation ecosystem in Ghana. Uh, after the fourth uh, minister, I started the understanding that we have here a um, double challenge actually. The first challenge is to uh, coordinate the holy triangle of innovation. 
אקדמיה, uh, government and the uh, private sector. The second challenge is to coordinate within the government between all the government, governmental institutions uh, who are doing uh, innovation uh, without any, uh, um, without knowing about each other. And this sometimes uh, uh, gives uh, a lot of uh, challenges to the system. So uh, what we have done, and I'm very proud of it because uh, it was something Um, it was an activity of Mashav that was grown out from the, the soil, from Ghana itself, from the needs of Ghana. We established a trilateral cooperation between Israel, uh, Mashav, uh, the GAZ, which is the development, uh, uh, um, developmental uh, agency of uh, Germany, and of course the government of Ghana and established the program innovation for the development. And for a year, all the governmental institutions in Ghana were meeting each other, telling each other what are their roles, what are they doing, their plans, their programs, thinking together. And only lately, after one year, Uh, we have managed to receive the blessing of the Vice President of Ghana, who will lead the uh, program uh, to the next phase. And soon we will see a coordinated uh, entrepreneurship and innovation uh, act uh, in the parliament. And for me, it is really something that uh, proves how sharing knowledge a simple sharing of knowledge uh, leads to uh, real um, outcomes. Thank you, Ambassador Cooper. This is really um, inspiring. And to learn more about the work in, uh, that is done in Ghana, I'm happy to, um, to introduce uh, another panelist that we have, Mr. Nelson Amu from Ghana. Should I say good afternoon to you, <laughs> Nelson? Good afternoon is in order, yes. <laughs> yeah, it's hard to keep the time zone uh, uh, in this conversation. So um, I have many things I would like to ask you. I mean, your profile shows that you are heavily involved in uh, the innovation ecosystem in Ghana. Could you just share with us, first of all, privately, what drives you? What drives me? I, I am driven really by the fact that I believe in the power of business to contribute to the development agenda as, as a country. If you take any emerging and developing economy, I, I believe that if we count a lot on governments to look at things like food security, to look at education, to look at health, um, to look at transportation, there is only so much government can do. But if we could leverage on the power of, of young men and young women, if you look at the fact that over 60% of, of Africa's continent is made up of below 35 years. I believe there's such a great prospect if we could really plug into what this offers and really turn on that innovative framework of young people and give them what it takes to build, we could address most of the challenges that we have as a country and even as, as countries on the continent of Africa. So I am very much involved in innovation in the innovation ecosystem because I believe there is so much we could achieve if we could just drive enough attention to that and give young people the right opportunities to really birth great uh, startups that could eventually grow into bigger companies and solve challenges. And uh, uh, thank you. I understand that, um, that we had you in Israel for, uh, for a training uh, some time ago prior to the pandemic. Uh, could you share with us some of your experiences and what you've learned? I believe this was not just a, a, a country training. I mean, you've met people from all over the world uh, in this training, right? Could you tell us a little bit about the experience and your key learnings? Okay. Maybe if I, I give a bit of a background into other things I do, that would also show the relevance of a training like what we had in Israel. So my company is InnoHub. And we, we uh, business accelerator that support small and green business to become sustainable and scalable and ultimately become investment ready. 
We've also launched what we call the Accra Angels Network, which is an angel investment uh, network that brings together high net worth individuals to invest in startups in, in Ghana. We've also, through World Bank funding, set up an SME fund that invests in climate smart businesses. And then finally, we also set up the Ghana Tech Lab that is supposed to drive innovation from the tech sector in the country. So against this background and looking at all the things I do, why would a training in Israel become relevant to us? So first of all, the training was called Accelerating Entrepreneurs in the Ecosystem. As we seek to build really world-class accelerators out of Accra, you, you want to find out who is doing what. Before I traveled to Israel, one of my favorite um, books I read was Startup Nation. And, and I really kept imagining, is it really like a movie or this is happening there? So I, I saw the opportunity to go to Israel and to understand what happens there firsthand as really one of the best things to ever happen to me. And that was because we did not sit in one place in Israel, but had a chance to visit a number of hubs, number of incubators around. And that really, you got to listen to what they do and, and try to find out what you are doing differently. As Ambassador Shani said, one of the things that really struck me was their coordination. No matter what incubator or hub or university you go to, it was as if someone called them prior to we going there and told them what to say. Because everybody literally said the same things in terms of what it takes to build a startup nation, what their focus was, was as a hub or incubator or as a university. And everybody understood where the country was going to. And since I came back from Israel, I, in all my engagements with various ministers, uh, government um, agencies, on radio programs, I was on, pro on radio last week, Thursday, and basically kept drumming home the need for coordination. And I was in one of these meetings organized by the Israel Embassy in, in Ghana here for various government agencies and sharing what it takes to build the ecosystem. And a lot of my learnings really came from what I saw in Israel, where everybody literally sang from the same hymn sheet. And until you are in a place like where we, I'm coming from, you wouldn't appreciate the coordination in Israel because almost every ministry has something for youth. They have something around innovation, something on entrepreneurship. Ministry of Agri has something, the Australian industry doing their own thing. Um, business development doing their own thing, but it gets to be too scattered and the results, therefore, it's not really what is expected. Um, so really getting to that point where they're happy to coordinate and, and really get things in a synchronous um, fashion is quite important. Again, I also understood what it takes to build winners and to support losers. One of the things that I learned from the Israel Innovation Authority um, on our visit is the fact that when somebody fails on their business, it should not be the end of the road. And typically here, when someone goes for funding and it fails, you become the object of, of ridicule and people really begin to think you are a failure. But we, 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 we got to appreciate how through the continuous support, you could actually go back to the um, Innovations Authority and make a case. If there is a valid case as to why you could get support for your next venture, you could get that. And, and I think it's really giving me a different mindset in supporting entrepreneurs through both the downtimes and the uptimes as well. I could go on and on if you give me the chance, but I know there are other panelists. So. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, that was very inspiring, Nelson. Thank you so much for sharing that. Um, I, I would like to, to uh, ask, uh, to go back to the minister and ask him another question, if I may, sir. Um, may I just ask you, as, as we've seen here pe people, the private sector, and we see the Israeli diplomats, and we've seen, of course, uh, the graduates of the trainings, which, uh, of course, are our pride. But I would want to ask you, sir, from a governmental point of view, and, and, and ask about, about the ways that the Senegalese government is looking into the, uh, the, the challenges. How, how does your, your work with us, with other uh, countries, and with your own resources, how do you contribute to the development and the structuring of entrepreneurship and in the innovation ecosystem uh, in your country? Well, um, before um, I joined the delegation, I used to work 
for uh, the Ministry of Finance as Director General for Finance. And prior to that also, I worked three years in the U.S. at the Gates Foundation in Seattle. And I've been working on some topics related to innovation, related to financial services for the poor, but also agriculture, etc. So when I came back in 2015, I had been able to contribute to the Senegalese uh, National Strategy 2025, which means at making uh, innovation contribute to 10% of the GDP and creating more than 50,000 jobs. And in order to do that, we have worked in six months. It was the uh, fastest law passed into parliament for the Startup Act that we pushed for together with the help of the World Bank and the Association of Startups. And it has been able to create a, a ecosystem that is favorable for fiscal, social, customs, and other financial advantages, but also uh, create a direct access to public procurement and support measures for capacity building. On top of that, the government is also working through other entities for a super calculator, through the Minister of uh, Higher Education, but also with what we call the Mohammed bin Zayed Center for Innovation and Entrepreneurship, which is our flagship project we're working on right now. It's going to be a 10 uh, store case building of uh, uh, 30,000 square meter of space for startups, young entrepreneurs in all tech sector, but also developing crafts, agriculture, et cetera, et cetera. This is a grant from uh, His Highness, the Emir of uh, Abu Dhabi. And what we are expecting, and I spoke at some point with the ambassador, Roy, about it, we can see how we could work further uh, with uh, uh, Israeli government through Mashaf, probably, to see how we could try to and to connect uh, the capabilities and experiences and expertise you have in Israel uh, to a developing nation like Senegal. For instance, uh, the work uh, uh, my team my team in agriculture, fisheries, uh, and uh, livestock are doing, they told me they need desperately technologies for hatcheries and et cetera, and uh, that can easily be imported from Israel, technical assistance corporation, and what, one way of doing that, I was thinking, uh, having heard from Ambassador Cooper, and indeed, I am not in favor of uh, copy-pasting uh, uh, models of economic development, but I am more for alignment. Well, I spent five years at OECD for all, uh, economic cooperation uh, to align development with local priorities, to try to make sure the technology we'll have in Israel can help enterprises, private sector, and civil society here in Senegal and I would love to count on you, Ambassador Schlein, to see how we could work together on an MOU to develop that together with Israel and Senegal. We would be uh, delighted, sir. And thank you for this very elaborated answer. As I'm looking at the chat, we've got lots and lots of questions. I don't know if we can answer all of them, but let me just run through a few. Uh, someone asked about uh, training in, in areas such as medicine and programming and agriculture and so on and so forth. Um, Israel is really trying to, to, um, to concentrate on, on eight uh, priority sectors. However, we can really build solutions for almost, almost any given problem. That is, we cannot maybe compete with other uh, uh, development oh. agencies of other uh, countries which may have much uh, bigger budgets. However, we specialize in capacity building, in training. We believe in train the trainers. We take those who can actually uh, go back home and train their own exactly. people. And then we work with them and we continue and we have follow up and we follow them uh, with them. We follow up with them throughout the years. I mean, on the happier side, I can say that we've had graduates of Mashab already for 50 and 60 years, and some of them have gone to uh, gone places and became uh, ministers and prime ministers and presidents, which is wonderful. But you don't need to be a president for us to invest in you. We just want <laughs> to share uh, with our friends, and we do that. And you know, we were faced with a major challenge this year, as uh, due to the pandemic, we couldn't do the best that we are normally doing, which is training. We couldn't send people, um, instructors to other countries. We couldn't send our, our survey teams and our experts to other countries or bring trainees to Israel. So we had to reinvent ourselves. 
And we've done so, you know, really thinking on our feet and we moved all of our training uh, um, activity online. And ever since, um, uh, I would say last spring, we've had uh, hundreds of, of uh, webinars and courses and lectures and where, where we try to bring people together. That's not easy. You know, people have uh, been suffering from Zoom fatigue, but the fact that all of us are gathered around this virtual table today actually tells me that there is hope. So we, we do a lot of, of uh, uh, capacity building. And uh, in this regard, we do this in order to create a better future. What do I mean by this? It's not just that we teach people or we train them or we engage with them. We do all of that. But also we're trying to make this sustainable. We work with government. We work with the private sector. We do, sometimes we have a, a PPP project, you know, with the private sector. And we're trying to, to, uh, to make every solution that we offer sustainable and bring in and push the private sectors on both sides. This is not just us pushing Israeli industry. Don't get me wrong. We do a lot of cooperation with our uh, friends uh, around the globe. And in this regard, I think that the, uh, uh, you know, we can cement the, the, the real value, you know, to create a, a bigger value for all of us uh, of, this, uh, um, of this activity. Now, so someone asked also in the chat uh, for an example of, of uh, a technique that we introduced that changed um, the way things are being handled in a, certain, in a given country. I'll give you an example. Um, for example, in um, Ethiopia, we had a, um, a 12 years old, 12 years project in, uh, in partnership with the USAID to introduce and bring and develop the avocado uh, growth. Uh, this never uh, was a crop of, of Ethiopia, but the um, but the terrain is 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 fitting, and the people were very uh, uh, keen on on developing this new product. And for over ten years, Israel had an excellent center. We sent trainers. We brought people to Israel, and we uh, together with the USAID, we built a program and the entire crop from A to Z, from the seedlings, from growing seedlings to, to planting them, to caring for the orchards and for you know, post-harvest uh, techniques and then uh, marketing um, technologies. And all in all, Ethiopia now is, is a, a, um, an exporter of avocado, which I think is, is, a, is a wonderful, wonderful uh, achievement. And, and we're, we're done, you know, we turned over the project to the Ethiopian government. They don't need us anymore. They have excelled yeah. on their own. And, and this is just one example. Um, and that was, if, if I may, please, sir. Pastor, if I may, one second. That was exactly what I was meaning. For instance, a concrete example is we have a part of the French investment in agriculture, uh, uh, other private sector developments, and then we're working with USADF. And one way I was thinking, for instance, with the uh, USAID, led now by someone to power to see how we can have a triangulation. They have programs here, they have resources, but you know, I always tell them you have problems of dispersing your resources efficiently. So, uh, what we could do is to see how we could use to work together to disperse the resources. Daniel knows what I'm talking about. Well, we should definitely uh, explore this, uh, Your Excellency, and uh, we're always looking for partnership because we don't own the, the, the knowledge. We, we want to work together with partners around the globe, developing from developing countries and developed countries. All in all, together, we can create a much uh, a stronger bond. Effective. I'm being asked uh, again and again about exactly. uh, a, an example for uh, innovation, and I want to turn this over to you, Ambassador Cooper. Would you... Tell us a little bit about the uh, innovation fair that you held and about maybe about the, the, the um, innovation uh, idea that won the prize there. Yeah, so thank you, Ambassador. Um, I, one of the um, uh, ways to encourage innovation uh, is to encourage uh, the uh, startups themselves and luckily, in Africa and specifically in Ghana, I think that the 
people are very innovative. You know, a lot of the, a lot of times we understand that from the need, uh, you create something new, you innovate, and uh, you can see a lot of uh, needs uh, in Africa, and therefore also a lot of uh, innovation. And when you uh, um, uh, when you see a, a good academic uh, education with uh, an understanding uh, government, with a strong uh, private sector, you can really see innovation. Uh, in uh, Ghana, we uh, opened uh, a year ago, yes, it was a year ago, the Israeli uh, in, uh, Green Innovation Competition. This uh, competition was open to all startupists who had a, an already um, uh, existing uh, um, uh, idea uh, or innovation uh, on agriculture. And um, the, we had around 20 every year, around 20 startups with the very nice ideas. Uh, the first, um, the, the, the winner of the first uh, competition had a wonderful idea uh, of how to uh, um, uh, 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 how to promote and how to improve the shelf life of uh, the um, uh, fruits and vegetables uh, here in Ghana. And he thought of an idea that will encourage a community of farmers to build from local ingredients, a cool storage uh, that will work also uh, from uh, solar energy and will store all the yams and cassavas and the corn uh, of the uh, farmers because a lot uh, from the yield uh, in uh, Ghana is uh, being thrown away because uh, it is uh, it, the sun is too hot uh, for it. And this guy had a very, very good uh, idea and we sent him to Israel uh, to meet with potential uh, uh, investors and uh, with the colleagues to this uh, agro-tech uh, uh, ecosystem. And now he's doing very well. By the way, the second one uh, who won uh, in 2020, uh, had a wonderful machine that helps sorting grains, okay? So sorting grains, this is not innovative for itself, but the machine knows also to weigh the uh, grains and then the farmer knows if this grain should go to be an animal uh, food or it can go to the market to be sold for uh, human uh, food. And it helps a lot to the farmers they are not, because they are not wasting their uh, products. They are not wasting what they have been working for a year on these uh, grains. And at the end of the day, they are selling it in uh, 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 very low uh, prices. So it helps them a lot to have money. So, uh, you know, again, People here are very, very innovative. I'm really thinking that Africa is the next place for, uh, the, the next continent for innovation. If you want to have good, strong uh, solutions for innovation, uh, uh, you should come and visit in Africa. Uh, and I'm very happy to be part of it. Thank you so much, Ambassador Cooper. I would like, uh, before we wrap up, I mean, we have a few more uh, questions to answer, but I want to um, ask, if I may, to ask uh, uh, Marianne, because we haven't uh, heard from you uh, uh, lately, in the last half hour, um, would you tell us what kind of message would you send to young entrepreneurs uh, in Senegal or all around Africa and the world? W what do you need in order to be a successful entrepreneur? Where does it take you and how do you see yourself in 10 years? Thank you. Uh, uh, the question is for me or for Sunny? Okay. Thank you, Ambassador Schlein. Uh, how, 
as as ambassador uh, ambassador Cooper just said, uh, we have a lot of innovation in Africa. Um, people see the need and they act on it. And I think that there is a turn in in our mindset, in our youth mindset, uh, to 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 see what the community needs and to try to act on it. I see it a lot and a lot more than 10 years ago. And I think that our young people in Africa are more driven, are more focused on finding solutions. And I think that it's the future of Africa. And that gives me a lot of hope. But in order to succeed, I think that we need to learn from people who already did. I, as, I, as we said uh, in, in French, il n'y a pas besoin de réinventer la roue. We don't need to reinvent the, the wheel. We just have to learn from the best and try to adapt it in, to our countries, to our realities. And I think that doing so, and with all the creativity we have, with all the innovation in our minds, that we could succeed. Well, thank you so much. This is very inspiring. Nelson, would you like to answer the same question? What would you say yes, to a young entrepreneur? Yes, I would like to answer that. Uh, again, there is a tool which I, I, I picked from Israel called the Market Opportunity Navigator. So before that, we had various tools, but I saw this to be a very useful tool because really it helps you to put the opportunity you are exploring into four quadrants where you ask some basic questions that help you understand what could be your low-hanging fruit, what could be your moonshot, and between the moonshot and low-hanging fruit are various options. If you want to build a business that could really succeed and do well, you need to be able to understand from this angle um, the, the opportunity you are pursuing, what is the level of effort required, and what would be the market you are targeting. You want to build with a market in mind. One thing you notice that most of these Israeli young innovators begin building with the global market in mind. They want to build something to sell off to a corporate in the US or to China or to Japan. Um, if you have a small market, um, what do you have to think of in, in developing your products? Again, there is the issue of relevant innovation. As Ambassador Cooper mentioned, there is really when to talk about innovation. It's not really about just the tech things, but how relevant is what you are building um, to the markets that you seek to serve. So for young entrepreneurs, um, we would need to really get them to really develop innovations that either address the market here or there is a market out there that they seek to serve and really how to be able to um, attract investments to your business because you're able to show you've addressed all the, all, all the things that investors want to see before they can sign um, a check for you. Um, I think in brief, that is what I'll, I'll add on. Yeah. Thank you so much, Nelson. Um, I've been asked a few times in the chat uh, some questions about what did Israel learn from teaching innovation or uh, through uh, working with Africa. And I'll say that there's um, a lot that we learn, but I think that the key issue here is that we learn, and uh, as we saw, the value of teamwork. I mean, Israelis work as a team, but we are really, um, we excel also as individuals, you know, and looking at the Africans, and I'm sorry, I'm generalizing, but but this is in a positive way, I think. I think the, the African uh, um, students that we work with are working together. They're, they're inspiring each other. They're brainstorming. They're really good in, in uh, uh, working together and supporting each other. Um, working through a cause. And you know what, this is, I was speaking just of the students, but I think we can see it also uh, on a very different level. Uh, as the pandemic broke in the beginning of last year, the entire world was shocked. Uh, the pandemic came to Africa only in March or April, but to see the response, the African response as a group of countries, if you looked at the African Union response, and the joint efforts of, of uh, dozens of governments to work together vis-a-vis to, uh, -vis the, um, the pandemic, that was very inspiring. Uh, we haven't seen this in other continents. Uh, the fact that they could all uh, gather together, the leaders gathered together 
decided on a policy and, and uh, implemented it with all of the, the uh, problems and hazards and, and, uh, and the, ch the huge challenges where you, you, um, that, that the continent was, uh, was faced with, I thought that was also very inspiring. And I think that is something that we can definitely uh, all learn. Before we wrap up, I want to um, um, share with you uh, another short video about innovation and mashab. And I just want to say before we, we start that, that um, there are so many questions I would have loved to ask. Unfortunately, our time is limited. One tiny thing that I will add is that I was asked about Morocco. We're, we don't have um, projects, Mashaf doesn't have projects in Morocco yet, but we look forward with these new uh, agreements that we have and we celebrate as Israel, the Abram Accords. We hope to be working in all of our, uh, all the, with and in all of the countries of our new friends and renew the friendship and uh, Mashaf activities in Morocco and in other countries. So um, let's watch the film and then we'll be part. Shalom, marhaba. I am Lucy and I live in Tel Aviv. Creativity and innovation are part of Israeli culture. It's how we approach any challenge locally and globally, especially when it comes to sustainable development. By sharing our knowledge and experience with the international community, we help others. Our international development agency, Mashav, works with local partners all over the world in plenty of fields. Israel is proud, striving to achieve the values of inclusivity leaving no one behind. You know, I'm truly inspired by the people, by the project, by the energy, the sheer determination to achieve a sustainable development goal. There is much to do, but UN 2030 agenda, we are on our way. Well, this was the shorter version of a long, uh, a much longer uh, clip, which actually shows innovation and less of tourism, but we had to uh, shorten it. And I welcome the, the young uh, uh, successor of, Ambassador, of uh, Minister Saar that joined us. Um, I want to thank the, um, the panelists for uh, being with us today. Uh, this has been a great opportunity to see all of you again after a long time, and we were truly inspired by your words you and your messages. Just what messages do you just no, Hello. And, uh, uh, bonjour. <laughs> bonjour et bonsoir et au revoir. And uh, <laughs> yes, uh, thank you very much for joining us. And for everyone who joined us uh, online, uh, I hope you will... Um, you, you will uh, be a part of Mashav community or uh, I'm, I hope you enjoyed this, this program. And I want to thank again uh, Wayne and the, uh, um, and the America Israel uh, Friendship League. I hope I'm looking forward to uh, having more programs and thank you so much for your support. Have a wonderful day. Be safe. Thank you. Ambassador Schlein, thank you so much for putting together this wonderful group and thank you to all of the panelists. We were only able to scratch the surface, but you did get to see some of the amazing work and the diversity of, of, of Mashav, which is not only in West Africa, it's all over Africa and all over uh, different parts of the developing world. And we're looking forward to continuing to shine more light on these amazing stories. You got a great advertisement for our next program on Wednesday at a special time, note the time, not at noon Eastern time, but at 11 Eastern time and uh, 7 p.m. Israel time, we will be doing a special focus on the Abraham Accords with representatives of the next generation that has to take over the diplomatic uh, diplomacy 
uh, and digital diplomacy that is going to be needed to attract the interest of future generations. So come join us on this amazing next episode. We're here every Wednesday and, and Sunday special time this coming Wednesday, February 3rd. Everyone have a safe and warm and sun-filled week. Thanks. Thanks, Wayne. And thanks for putting this together. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, everybody. Bye-bye, everybody. Thank you. Cheers. Thank you very Goodbye. much.